now is when we address some of the queries we've received. Let's bring on query number one. Hi, I'm an NRI and I've been living outside India for more than 15 years now. I work for a private company here. India definitely is a very uh, attractive investment opportunity destination, but how would you rate it against other countries like Brazil, South Africa, Malaysia or maybe Indonesia? And do you want to take that? Um, I, I'm not an expert on, on Brazil. Um, what I would say though, and uh, is that if I look at Indonesia and Malaysia, I mean I'm, I'm talking about very small markets. Um, so in, in terms of the growth there, uh, you know, I'm probably looking at five, six percent. Um, Indonesia does have a demographic dividend, uh, for sure. Um, but there's a lot of changes happening uh, there, which are, are, are positive as well. Um, but I think a lot of the mining uh, rights, the mining contracts that they're given out, a lot to Indian companies as well, I think will be changed over the, over the next few years. And I think that's going to be more beneficial for Indonesian companies than it is for Indian companies. Um, so it is an attractive destination. I'm just not sure of what companies I would want to buy in Indonesia. Brazil, um, you know, we, we all think it's a commodity-based economy. It is, uh, and that will continue to, you know, to, to be the, the, the screening point, I think, for foreign investors when looking at whether you should do in a BRIC fund, whether it should be Brazil, Russia, uh, India, or China. Um, I think my view would be that as interest rates come down in India, um, and as commodity prices hopefully you know, continue to fall uh, from their highs, um, you know, unless there's, there's some kind of problems in, in the Middle East in terms of Iran, then you know, I think India and China will be more attractive going forward than the resource-based uh, Brazil and Russia at this stage. Right, so clearly the vote goes for India over the other economies that you spoke of. Let's bring on uh, the second query on the show we have today. I'm an NRI and I know that a lot of income in India comes from overseas workers' remittances. Um, a lot of this money goes into real estate, fixed income or personal consumption. Do you think NRIs are still wary about investing in uh, equities? Yeah, I think uh, I've addressed that in some way, but the point is that I think the confidence in the stock market is not being built up. Uh, and that's not really something to do with the NRIs. I think the domestic investors, if you take that as a class, uh, they also have not been very, very enthusiastic about their own market. Uh, so I think there is a, a undercurrent of, uh, I don't know what to call it, maybe suspicion or, or lack of faith uh, in the long term in India, which, fi which I find it surprising because if you look at the composition of investors in the equity markets, they're very dominated by foreigners right now. Uh, the large amount of free float which is available is more or less FII investing, uh, which, which is really strange that you don't believe in your own market. Uh, I think the same sentiment that domestic investors have, I think, is carried over to the NRIs to a certain extent. And uh, maybe it is something to do with the equity cult. Uh, I, I don't think India has really embraced the equity cult so much, except for maybe one or two years in my uh, uh, past uh, history that I, I look at, uh, I think maybe a little bit in uh, in the mid 90s and uh, maybe a little bit in the mid 2000s, so 2006 probably, 2005 uh, were the times that the domestic market also got excited. But beyond these two years, we've not really seen a sustained inflow into equities uh, here. So I think that would be a little bit of a derivative going to the NRIs as well that they kind of subscribe to the same theory. We would just wait to kind of build the confidence in the Indian uh, corporate sector for equities to, to really shine in the future. Right, I hope we've addressed uh, both your queries, but uh, clearly India does remain a preferred investment destination. Yes, it does have its challenges, but I think, but as we've heard from uh, both the experts that we've had on this show, the opportunities uh, for India far outweigh those challenges. Clearly, India does remain a very attractive investment destination going forward, be it in terms of equity as an investment class or as an asset class or maybe real estate and other products as an asset class. India does clearly remain a big, big opportunity that just cannot be ignored. With that, we come to the end of this show. Andrew Holland and Tushar Pradhan, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.